Um, one of the many lovely things about having been a writer for a long time is that you can really begin to see how one book prepares you for another and how one set of ideas really opens you to another. And before I talk to you about what prayer is, I want to tell you a little bit about how I came to write a book on prayer, and in fact, even how I dared to write a, a book on prayer. Um, and this one relates very, very directly to an earlier book of mine called Seeking the Sacred. And Seeking the Sacred itself owes much to an earlier book still called Forgiveness and Other Acts of Love. And in Forgiveness and Other Acts of Love, and also in Seeking the Sacred, I talk very explicitly about those moments in our lives which we almost would never welcome when our resources that we have to this point, at whatever the point is in our lives, are simply not working for us. Whatever we are facing is too much, too hard, too unfamiliar, too overwhelming, and all the strategies for coping that we thought we had are simply not enough. And those are really crossroad moments in all of our lives. They're very humbling moments, and they can be moments in which we actually begin to taste something very close to despair, or feelings of hopelessness or helplessness. But they can also be immensely potent moments, because it's when those familiar strategies are not working that we have to go to a deeper place. And there's a wonderful Bengali poet called Rabindranath Tagore, and he has said many marvelous things. One of them is, the winds of God's grace are always blowing. It is up to us to raise the sails. You know, so we have to align ourselves with those changes. But the, but the quotation from him that I was thinking about when I was thinking about being with you today was that our true life lies a great depth within us. And what he meant by that is that we have resources of the soul, resources of the spirit, resources of the heart that we very rarely tap into. And we probably tap into them only when we really feel that we must or we have nowhere else to go. Because a lot of the time we just flatter ourselves that we can cope with whatever it is. There are also sometimes moments of great celebration when our awe about life or our ecstasy at re really recognizing what a precious gift this life is, or somebody is born, or somebody is exceptionally kind to us, and uh, we have a sense of renewal of life. And those are also very potent moments. And I wrote about that, as I said, in Forgiveness and Other Acts of Love, very explicitly, certainly in Seeking the Sacred. But I wanted also, and this emerged out of Seeking the Sacred, to find a way to bring us into a recognition of those soul strengths, those strengths of spirit, those strengths of heart, on a very regular basis. And of course, through time immemorial, through all the cultures that we know about, through all the religions that have been recorded, through every kind of race, gender, every kind of um, identity that usually divides us, we recognize an impulse in our human family to pray. And I think we really need to take note of that universality of that, because what emerges from that awareness, for me at least, is that praying is very natural. It's very natural because it aligns us not only to a sense of hope outside ourselves, but also to a sense of hope within ourselves. And it does something else too. It really clarifies and refreshes the mind. Now, our, our 
minds can take us to quite negative places very easily. They can take us to places of worry. They can take us to places of disappointment. They can take us to places of sadness, of suffering, even causing suffering to others. And when we read a prayer, when we pray a prayer, and not every prayer is a prayer. I'm going to talk a bit more about that, and I hope that Walter will ask me something about it. But not every prayer is a prayer. But when we come to a prayer that is a true prayer, that really aligns us with this power of love that is in our lives, and that does not depend on a certain set of beliefs, that doesn't leave out some and include others, when we come to a prayer of that magnitude, and it can be a, a very simple prayer, but a prayer of that power and magnitude, it actually moves our thoughts in a healing direction, and it moves us also in a healing direction. And it moves us also towards a more spacious way of thinking, of living, of being, of receiving. And this is enormously significant. So before we go to our Q&A, I just want to say to you that a couple of things. One is that I learned to pray I learned it all over again as an adult, as a mature adult. I had to learn it all over again because the ways that I'd learned to pray as a child didn't serve me as a mature adult. And I learned it when I needed it. But I've also learned that I really need it all of the time and that there are prayers that suit all kinds of moods, needs, occasions, and that they are constantly available to support me. They're constantly available to remind me that in this life, I don't have to rely only on the resources of my personality or my ego or my intellect, but that I can rest and rely upon something that is significantly deeper than that. And I also learned that prayer is not an obligation. I am not praying because I should. I am not praying because, you know, the gates of heaven will open for me. In fact, I am praying because in praying, I can bring the gates of heaven open on earth, which is why the book is called Heaven on Earth. Um, I, I chose that title very prayerfully, actually. And the third and final thing I'll say before we go to our Q&A is that prayer is not only a source of nourishment, it is also a reminder of joy. We can often pay so much attention to what is wrong in our lives, and prayer also moves us towards a joyful place. Um, an appreciative place. And it does this not only through the words of the prayer and the attention that we give to those words, it does it through where the words take us. Because actually, prayer begins, uh, extends, continues to nourish beyond the words. The words are like a compass setting pulling us most gently and most subtly, but quite powerfully, in a particular direction. And when the prayer is prayed, and when we are prayed by the prayer, then the prayer continues to work on us. Which is why, for many uh, people, using a book like mine will involve perhaps just opening it and finding what is the gift of prayer for me today you know, by chance. Or it will involve also perhaps writing something out. But it will also involve approaching the prayer each time that you come to it as though it was entirely new and given to you freshly on this day. Because you have never met this day before. And this day hasn't met you before. So if you meet your prayer freshly, 
on this day, it can give you something so beautiful and so personal and so universal and all those aspects of prayer you can truly and deeply trust. So thank you for letting me give you that introduction.